Hello, what is up guys? Jinxen here again, and today I'll be showing you guys my personal Templar build that I've been trying out for the past few days. And before starting the video, I just want to include that the build I'm running is like not very good because it's not built to be optimal, but rather for playstyle mostly. And so it's catered to how I want to play the game. So if you guys want like a better optimized build, I don't really suggest following my build. With that being said, I'm trying to get the 50 wisdom bracket for that 5% cooldown reduction since that's what I'm aiming for. To get as much cooldown reductions as possible with wisdom. And then 50 strength is also absolutely crucial because with the equipments that I'm using, I won't be having much health to survive. So not only you get the heavy attack bracket, but you also get just enough health and then afterwards, I just put everything into perception for that buff duration, since my kit is loaded with self buffs. So it will benefit so much from the increased duration. Overall, I just try to get as much wisdom as possible since I love having low cooldowns for sword skills. I'm currently using Azrael Sword and Laquirus Tome because they give me the most base damage. Since Laquirus is the only tome that gives you 13 attributes, and Azrael is the highest base damage sword out of all swords. I also learned to like Azrael's sword's passive, as I actually rely on the shield block a lot of times due to how squishy I am. So, I will need a lot of stamina, and that's when the passive helps me out. Right now I'm using Swirling Essence Hat, because it gives you the most cooldown reduction out of all hats if you pair it with the cooldown trait which will give you a total of 10% cooldown reduction plus 1% from the four wisdom. As for cape, I just use the one cape that pretty much everyone uses, which is the supreme devotion for even more cooldown reduction. And then I use field general armor and boots for the melee heavy attack set effect. Although I would rather get field general gloves than armor because the gloves gives way more perception and attack speed. Which is also pretty important, since sword and shield skills are kind of slow and sluggish. So you want to dish out skills as fast as possible before your buff timers run out. I bought the Ascended Gloves just because it's cheap. And it's also not that bad as it gives perception and helps with mana management. Since I do find myself running low on mana sometimes. I also have Swirling Essence Pants since it was also cheap to get. And the set effect is not too terrible because it helps with your debuffs, like your cleaving roar, which reduces your enemy's endurance and causes your attacks to deal extra damage. I'm currently using Clasp of Conqueror for necklace, but when possible, I would want to buy Templar Choker instead because it gives more cooldown reduction. Primal King Bracelet is pretty much a must have for all DPS builds, and it's also cheap and easy to get. Sapphire Ring is also best in slot as of now for DPS builds, and it gives me wisdom which means even more cooldown reduction. And on the other hand, I have the Alabaster Ring, which gives a pretty decent amount of strength as well as attack speed, which is very important for a sword and shield focused DPS build. And lastly for belt, I'm just using whatever I have since the Bloodlust belt is too expensive for me to afford at the moment. In conclusion, the biggest downside of this build is on top of having very unstable damage due to how much wisdom I have, I also have very low crit chance. So the premise of this playstyle is that I wanted to focus on sword skill damages, while using buff skills from wand to funnel all the damage into sword skills. And yes, I'm fully aware that I can just use Touch of Despair and Curse Explosion for more damage, but that's not how I want to play it out. The reason why I'm using Ray of Disaster is not because of its damage, but for its multiple hits which would help me proc the Spectrum of Agony passive. And Spectrum of Agony allows me to extend the duration of Cleaving Roar at the same time. So I will have more of that Endurance debuff uptime. So the combo for this is pretty simple, and you can freestyle it. I usually start off with Enchanting Time into Fighting Spirit and Counter Barrier for the damage buffs. And then I use Cleaving Roar into Ray of Disaster, and then Shot at Victory for the Sword Skill Damage buff. After that, you can follow up with Shield Strike into whatever skill is available. I also use Fountain of Life instead of Swift Healing, because I can help healing my allies in Dungeon easier. And it also helps me proc the Selfless Soul passive way faster as well for the mana recovery. 
As for weapon mastery, I chose the collision tree again for sword, because it gives me the most damage, as well as cooldown reduction. And then for wand, I also have the top tree for the 8% cooldown reduction as well.